And now we want to also let you know that ABC News has projected the state of North Carolina has been projected for President Biden in the Democratic race and Donald Trump in the Republican race with the Democratic nominee for governor going to Josh Stein and the Republican won by Mark Robinson. Joining us now for more is Congresswoman Deborah Ross of North Carolina. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Congresswoman. As a Democratic representative from North Carolina, give us your reaction to the results that you see coming in there tonight. Well, none of the results um, surprised me. I think that the important thing to see, though, is that President Biden has consolidated the Democrats in North Carolina. There are fewer defectors than um, President Trump has, or former President Trump. As a matter of fact, Nikki Haley had a huge rally in my district over the weekend, and she did even better in Wake County than she did statewide. Same thing with Josh Stein. He has consolidated the vast majority of the Democratic voters, and while Mark Robinson did win, the Republicans are more split. I think that this bodes well for the Democrats in November. Are there particular policy areas where you believe the Democratic Party can gain traction with North Carolina voters? Well, the economy is the number one issue. And the better the economy does, the better Biden will do. And people are seeing their economic stakes rise. And as we're seeing interest rates coming down, supply chains um, stabilizing, people are feeling more secure. But they're not secure yet. We're still having some sticker shock at the grocery store and in housing prices. But as things stabilize, I think that Biden's chances will increase. Voter turnout, as we all know, is critical. What efforts are being made to engage and mobilize voters across diverse communities in the state? Huge efforts are being made, and it's not just the parties doing it. There are a number of independent groups doing voter registration, particularly with young voters, new voters, Almost 60 people a day move into my congressional district, and people are trying to get them registered to vote and educated. I'm laser focused on Wake County, the largest county in the state, and making sure that we maximize the voter turnout because that will help candidates up and down the ballot. And what lessons would you say have been learned from past election cycles in North Carolina, and, and how are they shaping your approach this time? Well, one of the main things was during COVID, we were doing too many things virtually. Of course, we needed to do that for our health, but people really value that personal connection and that personal touch. And so we have boots on the ground already. We have great uh, groups that are just organic in their communities bringing people together. The other thing that we learned was that not all of our big cities always perform, so we've got folks who are working on that, and that we need to run up the vote in every single county. And we have candidates in almost every race at the General Assembly and the local level. And that means that more people are excited, more people feel a personal connection, and more people will vote. Serving on the House Ethics Committee, how do you believe transparency and accountability in government play a role in building trust with voters? And how does this relate to the broader democratic process? Well, transparency and accountability are key. And as a matter of fact, I think that that is one of the things that is driving Trump's numbers down and helping Nikki Haley. She's not going to win, but she has definitely shown a bright light on how he operates. People want to know how things work, and people want to be able to have that connection with the candidates. And so the more we show people how things work, help them get registered to vote, get to the polls, and show up in their communities, the more likely it is that they'll be engaged. As someone who fought for fairness and justice as a civil rights lawyer, how do you incorporate these principles into your stance on issues like voting rights, racial justice, especially relevant on Super Tuesday? I think the most important thing is to let everybody know that their vote matters. North Carolina elections statewide are notoriously tight. 
And we have to tell people they matter. We are listening to them and help them navigate the system. The legislature, which is Republican controlled, has put a lot of roadblocks in the way, making it hard. We have voter ID for the first time. We need to show people how it can work for them and that we care that they show up and that their elected officials are responsive. Congresswoman Deborah Ross of North Carolina, we so appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.